Imagine having your own cybersecurity lab right at home, but this isn't any lab. This one's built in the cloud and is free and is ready for you to attack just like a hacker. Today, we're going to set up your own AWS environment and run some commands against it to attack it just like a hacker would. And we're going to be able to detect it just like a cybersecurity analyst would. Hi there, my name's AJ, and on this channel, we teach all things cybersecurity for beginners, so let's get into it. Now, if an attacker wants to get access to somebody's AWS infrastructure, what they're going to need are some AWS API keys. So if they're able to steal some AWS API keys, they're then going to try to authenticate to that AWS infrastructure. And once they authenticate, they're going to want to figure out more information about those API keys. And they'll want to figure out more about that user and the permissions that it actually has so they can figure out what they can do within that AWS infrastructure. And one AWS API command that they might run is called get caller identity. And this is going to display more information about the user that ran that request. So if we know that attackers often when they steal API keys will run this command, what we'll want to do then is generate an email alert to execute and to alert us anytime that this command is executed and this API is run. And then this is going to alert to us as a cybersecurity analyst so that we can then authenticate. And what we're going to use to actually generate that alert is Amazon SNS, Amazon CloudTrail and AWS EventBridge. So I'm now going to show you how to set this up. The first thing that we're going to do is actually set up a free tier AWS account. So you want to head over to AWS head over to sign into the console, and then you're gonna to wanna to create a new AWS account. So you're gonna be asked for an email, so a root user email, so enter your email and give the account a name. Then it'll ask you to confirm the account, so grab the verification code from your email. Then you're gonna to wanna to set a password. And as always, remember to use a strong and long password. So this is where it's gonna ask you for your contact information. So you can see here, we're going for the free tier. All AWS accounts could explore three different types. So we're going to do always free, never expires, 12 months free, start from initial signup. And then there's also trials from the start of service act activation. But we're going to try and keep all of this within the free section. What you want to do is just go through here, tick personal, and then just fill in your details. You are going to be required to enter some billing information. But as it says here, they're not going to charge you when it, as long as you stay below the free tier limits. But they are going to put a temporary hold of $1 just to make sure that you can actually verify your identity through a bank account. So you are going to need a card for this. And then once you complete the account setup, congratulations, you set up your first AWS account. And you'll be able to see in the corner that you're listed in project one, which is the account that you've just created or whatever name you assigned it. But you have successfully set up an AWS account. Make sure that you're selecting basic support and free when you're going through the account setup, just to make sure that you keep it within the free tier. Now that we've got this AWS account set up, we're gonna wanna set up simple notification service so that we can get an email anytime our attacker activity is detected. So we wanna head over to the simple notification service. As you can see here, you could then click on this and you could then go and create a topic. So you can call it whatever you like. We're just gonna call it API call a little one, then click next. And as you can see here, it'll bring you to this wizard. You can leave this as standard. You can do name, display name. We can call it the same thing. API call a little one. And then we can go down here and create topic. We now need to create a subscription for this topic. So you wanna to go to create script subscription, select protocol. This is gonna be email. Now enter the email address of where you want to receive those alerts. And then once you've done that, you can click on create subscription. And then as you can see here, it says status pending confirmation. Go into your email box. You'll get an email to this email. You want to click on the link to verify that email. And then this will update the status. And then as you can see here, then once it's updated, it'll show status as confirmed. So congratulations, you've just set up SNS to send you email alerts. Now that we've set up SNS, what we want to set up now is CloudTrail because CloudTrail is what's going to let us log everything that takes place in our AWS account. And by logging this activity, this is what is going to allow us to detect the malicious attacker activity, which we'll then be notified by SNS via email through what we just set up. So you wanna head over to CloudTrail and you want to go to Trails here and you're gonna to wanna to create a new trail, so create trail. And then you've got trail name, so you can name this whatever you like. So we'll do my CloudTrail one then you want to create a new S3 bucket and then you can leave this as default. You can disable log file SSE KMS encryption. We're not going to need that for this video. Then SNS notification delivery. So this is what we just set up. 
So you can do create a new topic or we want to do existing. And then you want to select the one that you just created. So this one here, then you want to go next and it's going to show events, event type. You want to tick management events. And then you want to tick down here to make sure that read and write for API activity is also ticked as well. Then you want to click next and this is going to allow you to review the settings. So just make sure this is all correct as you can see here. And then you can go ahead and click create trail. And then when you come back to cloud trail and go into trails, what you're going to be able to see is your trail name. And you can see that the status should eventually update to say that it is login. And to be able to confirm that, what you can do is go into event history. And then this is going to show you all of the events that are actually being captured by CloudTrail so that you know it's successfully logging all of the activity that takes place in our AWS account. And congratulations, you've just set up CloudTrail for the first time. Now that CloudTrail has been set up, what we're going to set up next is a rule in Amazon EventBridge. So you want to head over to Amazon EventBridge in your console and you want to go to rules. So the Amazon EventBridge, as it says here, is a rule which is watching for specific types of events. And this event that we're looking for is called get caller identity. And this command is sometimes used by attackers when they first get access to a AWS token to be able to confirm who they've actually logged in as. So it's very similar to the Linux command, who am I? So this Amazon event bridge rule will then send the event to our SNS notification and then SNS will then email, it, email us about it to alert us. So what you want to do, you want to go on to create rule and you want to give it a name. So there you can give it any name that you like and then you can do rule type, rule with event pattern and then you want to click next and then as you can see here you can leave <clears throat> you can leave these as default and then as you scroll down you can leave this as blank as you can see it's optional but what we want to do here then is enter this so you want to do custom pattern json editor and then we're going to enter this custom json so we can see what it's showing here this source is specifying the aws resource of where it's coming from it's aws sts which is the security token service then we've got the detail type which is aws api call via cloud trail and they will indicate that the event type is an api that cloud trail recorded the event source then is showing that it's related to the sts service and this is actually used for identity and access management and the event name is referring to the specific api call which is being made to the sts service in this case we're looking for get caller identity which as mentioned is used to retrieve information about the resource which is actually making the request which as mentioned is often used by attackers when they first get access to an AWS infrastructure. They'll want to try and figure out who they've actually logged in as and what permissions they actually have. You can then click next. Then you'll see it says select targets and you're gonna to wanna to select AWS service, type in SNS topic, and then you're gonna to wanna to search for the one that you created. So click on the one that you created and then you can click next. And then it's gonna ask you to configure tags, which we don't need to do. So you can click next. So now you just want to review the settings and just make sure they look the same as mine. As you can see here, we've got the name, we've got the pattern for the rule, which is the JSON that we've added, and the target, which is now an SNS topic, which is going to allow us to actually alert on this and send us an email once it's detected. And you want to make sure that this input target is selected as matched event, which it should be. You can then go ahead and create the rule. Then you've successfully set up an Amazon event bridge rule and you should see here that it's listed as enabled. So congratulations. Now we wanna actually test this to see if it's working. So to do that, I'm gonna head over to my Kali Linux virtual machine. And this is what's gonna be my attacker machine for this video. And I'm going to want to connect to my AWS infrastructure and run the get caller identity command to confirm if my detection is actually working. So first up then, you're gonna to wanna to run AWS configure. So this command here. When you run this, you may not have the AWS CLI or command line installed. It should prompt you to actually install it. So just follow the prompt to actually install the AWS command line and then try and run this command again. But if you are getting any issues with trying to set up the AWS command line, I have linked in the description on how to actually set that up by following the AWS documentation. But again, you should be prompted. If you still have any issues, just comment down below and I'll reach out to you to help. So what this command is actually doing is it'll help you set up the command line interface to be able to interact with your AWS console. So when you hit enter, first it's gonna ask you for your AWS access key ID. And to be able to get all of the information for your the AWS configure, you're gonna to wanna to head over to your console. So for this, I'm gonna be using the root user. In cloud security, this is not the right way to do it. Don't be using your root user in a production environment. 
Thankfully, this is only a test project environment, so I'm going to show you how to do it here. But like I said, this is not the good practice for doing it in a cloud environment. You never want to use your root user credentials. But for the simplicity of this video, that's what we're going to do. So you want to go to the account name here, security credentials. Then what you want to do is you want to see where it says access key here. You want to create a new access key. And as you can see here, it doesn't want us to use root user access keys because it's not re recommended. But for the basis of the video, it'll be okay. Create access key. And as you can see here, this is the access key. So you're going to copy this, paste this into your terminal. Mine's already set up, so I'm just going to hit enter. Then you want to set up your AWS secret access key. So that's this here. This is going to allow you to authenticate. This mine's already set up. So then the default region name. So again, this information is here. So you can head back to security credentials. As you can see, if you go back to your main page, you'll be able to see up here that my one is set as EU-North1, but whichever one yours is set at, please use that one. So again, we're going to enter that here, enter, and then the default output we're going to put as JSON. So you can type JSON into there and then you can hit enter. And now we've just configured our AWS command line. So now that we've set that up, what we're going to do is actually run our AWS command, which was AWS STS get caller identity. Remember that this is the command that we were trying to alert on. So we hit enter. And as we hit enter, very similar to the who am I command, it's going to return all of the information related to the user that is logged in. So now if we head over to our emails, so go and check your email inbox for the email that you set up for the SNS notifications. And you should see an alert that looks like this. It should say the name of what you called it, and then it'll send it to yourself. And then this is the log that has generated from that alert. Now I've just copied that into here just so we can view it better. As you can see here, showing our source being CloudTrail. So in the account information, it's so in the service, which was the STS service, shows the event name, which was get caller identity. And it's also showing a source IP address and the actual user agent then, which actually generate this activity. So this is very similar to an alert that a cybersecurity analyst would get, and you'd then be required to investigate this further. So to conclude, you've been able to set up your own free tier AWS account. You're also now able to use Amazon SNS, EventBridge and CloudTrail to be able to detect potential attacker activity. You're able to run those attacker commands on your machine to be able to test it, and you can actually analyze the alert just like a cybersecurity analyst would do. And these are the exact things that you should be writing down on your resume and your CV and telling your potential employers. This is basic detection engineering and basic cybersecurity analyst analysis. Now, if this has piqued your interest about getting into cybersecurity, go and watch this video next where I tell you how I got into cybersecurity without any experience. Thank you for watching. I'll see you over there.